talk about Al Keynes. Al Keynes, it's got an E in it. Success criteria or the learning intentions link up together. Stating definition of homologous series referring to Al Keynes. So last class we looked at Al Keynes, today we're looking at Al Keynes. Say the general formula for Al Keynes homologous series. So the formula is going to be slightly different. Name and draw the linear and branched alkenes up to five or four and five. Four for branched, five for linear. Homologous series, the definition is the same. Alkenes is called an unsaturated. So unsaturated means it's obviously not the most number of hydrogens possible. So it means we can put more. And the reason we don't have the maximum is because we've got a minimum of one double or carbon to carbon double bond. Yeah. So the definition of homologous series is the same. As it applies to alkenes, the difference is that we've got one double bond present. Any questions on that? General formula. Alkenes Right, it's one double carbon carbon bond has the general formula C N H two N. So what do we notice compared to alkanes, which is here, C N H two N plus two? What's changed? We lost the two, so we've lost two hydrogens. And the extension is we can have multiple double bonds in a molecule, right? And we lose two hydrogen bonds per additional double bond present. Right. But at, at year 10, we only look at alkenes that have a single double, a single double bond, if that makes sense. One double bond. Yeah? yeah? So if I had six carbons, how many hydrogens do I have for an alkene? Twelve. Fantastic. If I had 12 carbons, how many hydrogens would I have? Twenty-four. Excellent. Naming and drawing. Notice that the first member of the alkene family is ethene. F is two carbons. Why can't I have methane? Why does that not make sense? I need to have a double bond. I can't have a double bond if I don't have two carbons. Yeah? Hydrogen will not form double bonds also. It will only form a single. Because it only wants one electron in order to satisfy its outer shell. So ethene. Prefix is the same. So we're expecting the prefixes for all of our members are going to be the same. Yeah? Formula C2H4. Semi-structural. So if we remove all of the individual bonds and group them by carbons, it's going to be CH2CH2. Notice I... We, it can be represented in two ways. Sometimes it's written with the double bond explicitly and sometimes not. So be careful when you're looking at formula as to whether or not that double bond is going to be implied. How we know is that carbon atoms want to have four bonds. So if I've got, if at a, I'm at a terminal carbon, what that mean? A carbon on the end, if it's less than CH3, if it's CH2 or CH, on the end, it means there's going to be a double bond there. If it's a non-terminal carbon and it's in the middle, and it's CH2, then it's going to be single bonds either side. If it's going to be CH, there's probably going to be a double bond there, or at least single bonded to three carbons. There's my structural formula. Don't worry too much about the shape of this, because it's not straight up and down as what you may see. It is displayed in a certain manner, but I'm not going to be too picky about how you display the, um, the molecule at U10. The third member, propene. Prop means three. Ene means double bond. So it's only got a single double bond, right? Rather than double. So I've got carbon, double bond, carbon, single bond, carbon. Each carbon has um, four bonds. So this one we can see has got four bonds around it. Two single bonds to the hydrogen, double bond to a carbon. This has got four. Two to this side, one to this hydrogen, one to this carbon. And this will have three. 
to fill up its four bonds. So, notice how that's slightly different to propane. Would have an additional hydrogen here. Yeah, an additional hydrogen here in place of where that double bond is. So if we think of that double bond opening up and we add hydrogen across that double bond. Yeah. And we'll look at types of bond, well, probably more so next year. We look at alkene reactions. Right, propane. So if we look at the structure of propane, I'll draw that on the board. Propane aim Right, all single carbon to carbon bonds. It's got six hydrogens. Sorry, eight hydrogens. Right, propene double bond. The common mistake is to put a second hydrogen on this carbon. But from a chemical standpoint, that doesn't make sense because we cannot have more than four bonds. I've got one, two, three, four, so I can't have that second hydrogen. So often students will put an extra hydrogen in there. We don't want that present. So counting your number of bonds around your carbon. Sorry, but isn't double bond in the double bond? No, the double bond is in the ene, single bond's in the ene. Sorry. Four carbons, butene. Yeah, and this is sort of a sort of a combination of semi-structural and and structural. I haven't explicitly shown the hydrogens there. So we can see there double bond here at the start, and there's a reason I'm numbering them, and I'll explain that next. Yeah, but means four. Ene means it contains a double bond. CNH2N, two lots of four is eight, eight hydrogens for four carbons. Make sense? Yeah? Extension, if I, sorry, pentene is the last one. We want to name and draw up to five carbons. In this example, I've explicitly shown the hydrogens involved. Double bond there. I'm not going to be, like I said, you could draw the double bond across here make it appear to be linear. This is a little bit more correct in terms of its shape, but even then uh, I would ordinarily zigzag these across. Right, so you can draw the double bond like I've drawn here in propene, uh, pentene. I'd be happy for you to draw it like this. Right, as if it were linear. Yeah, so that's acceptable. You don't have to draw this like angle here at a year 10 level. If you're continuing on with chemistry, start to consider drawing them a little bit more correctly. So if you're considering uh, furthering your chemistry, we would probably do something more like that. Okay. Which is a slightly better representation. C5H10. Isomers, right, we've seen that before. Isomer means the same, same molecular formula, different structure. In addition to changing the structure around, I can actually change the position of the double bond, right? I can change the position of the double bond or I can shift the atoms around. So something to consider. We've got both structural and positional isomers with alkenes. So in the example of butene, I've got two possible positions where I can put that double bond. So in this example, we can see here the double bond comes off the first carbon or the double bond can come off the second carbon. Right? So these are both linear forms, linear in quotes, forms of butene. And we number... The posi oh, I've got propanol there. That should be butene. Any advice? Let's fix that up. So 
three isomers of butane, two linear forms, and notice where I'm putting the numbers. So I've got my prefix, the number in front of the ene indicates where the position of that double bond occurs. So but one ene is the double bond coming off the first carbon. But two ene is the double bond coming off the second carbon. And I've also got methyl propane. Oh, I didn't explicitly mention. I'll go back aside. Note how there's only one isomer for ethene and propane. I can't arrange that in any other way. It's only one way. So one isomer. Three ways for butane. I can put a branch here of a methyl group coming off the second carbon, right, and that double bond coming off the first carbon. If the number is not explicitly mentioned, right, then the assumption is it comes off the first. So if I just said butene, right, then the assumption would be that double bond comes off the first carbon. Right? So we can start to see that alkanes fairly straightforward. The longer the hydrocarbon chain, and once we start to introduce functional groups like alkenes, we start to get more complexity. Any questions on that? Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's pretty much it. Then it goes into extension. So we've got isomers of pentene. We go up to five isomers, right? And I've listed them all there. I won't go through them all. Go through them if you're interested. When we get to year 11, you look at isomers up to eight carbons next year. It's part of the new course. Yeah, up to eight carbons and up to two functional groups. But let's, you know, focus on the basics in year 10. And those of you who want some extension, I've got that for you. Further extension, and we go into this in year 12 chemistry, if this interests you as well, is that when I consider double bonds, there's no free rotation. So we get free rotation around single bonds. Once I put a double bond in there, it's got hindrance, so it doesn't rotate. And so what happens is I end up with what's called cis. Cis means on the same side, so notice how I've got that sort of boat shape there. Yeah? And trans meaning means across from. So trans, I've got these uh, groups on opposing sides of that double bond. Maybe you could think of that as the chair form. So this is a chair and this is a boat. Right? Cool. But again, that's, that's more year 12. And not all alkanes have cis or trans forms is the other thing to consider. So if I put the two methyl groups coming off the same carbon, there's no cis or trans for that, for methylpropane, for example. All right. So that finishes it off. State the definition of homologous series referring to alkenes. All right. Homo means same. Same family. Similar physical and chemical properties. Each member differs by CH2. General formula, CNH2N. Name and draw linear alkanes up to five. Prefixes are the same. Eth. Eth is the first member. Ethene, propene, butene, pentene. Name and draw the branch alkane, alkenes with up to four carbons. Ethene and propene have one isomer only. And we've got our three isomers of butene. But one ene, but two ene, and methyl. Propane. Prop is the backbone, so it's got a three carbon in a linear chain, and then methyl group coming off that second carbon. And that's it.